pleasant good morning to all the saints gathered. I greet you in the name of our Lord, Savior, and the soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Certainly a joy to see all of you as you are gathered together once again to worship. We do want to welcome our Facebook family, those who are joining us live online. We pray God's blessing upon you as you will join us in worship at this time. We also would encourage those who are um, on Facebook to start a watch party to invite their family members and friends to be a part of what God is doing at this time. So let's go before the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing upon the service. Dear merciful Father, once again, we bow in your presence. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being in control. We pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, you would lay your hand upon our lives, that you will pour into our spirit that you will grant unto us that which is necessary for our growth, for our upward and forward movement as your people, that God our lives will be a testimony of your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Continue to bless us and take us forward in victory. Let your hand be upon this service. Let there be a manifestation, not just in your house, but God on the various platforms for which this video is being aired. We pray that each person who will view will be ministered unto. Yokes will be destroyed, burdens will be lifted, and you will take us from glory to glory, victory to victory, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. At this time, we do want to welcome our worship ministers as we go into a time of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah, God, for your mercy and joy forever. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless your name this morning. We worship you this morning. We adore your name this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun this morning. Your name is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun. All into the going down of the sea. The name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun. All into the going down of the sea. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is to be Come on, let's praise the Lord this morning. Praise Him. Praise Him, the Lord. Praise Him, the Lord. Praise Him, the Lord. Praise Him, the Lord. Praise Him, 
Father, we bless you. Father, we worship your name. You are worthy to be praised. Oh God, we thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We, we just thank you, oh God, for your provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. How many of your God has been good to you all this morning? Hallelujah. We want to give God praise. We, we just want to thank him for his goodness and his mercies. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship your name. Hallelujah. We bless your name. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand. From no moment in that I wake up in my head oh, I will say of the goodness come on I love you Lord I love you Lord for your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hand the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will say Of the goodness of God Your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after Your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will say of the goodness of God. I love your voice. Your voice, you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the good. So good with every 
your name this morning. Oh, as we continue to give your praise. Oh, as we continue to lift up your name on high, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, oh God. Oh, we bless your name. Oh, we bless your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, we worship your name this morning. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor, God. Lord, we bless your name. Oh, we worship your name this morning, God. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, oh God. Lord, we bless your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, God. Yeah, God, we worship your name. Oh, we bless your name. Oh, we thank you, God. Come on, you are here this morning. You are here. Moving in the midst. I worship you. You are here this morning. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. You are here, you are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. We make up, we make miracles work. Hallelujah, in the darkness.
lift up our hands to worship you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God a round of applause this morning. Let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. So we worship your name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's put our hands together and we welcome our pastor this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for that time of worship whereby we can just go before God and He ministers unto us by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Pleasant good morning to all the saints gathered. I greet you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Uh, before you have your seat, just turn to your neighbor, give them a nod as you say, God bless you. And when you're finished, you may have your seats. A special good morning to the or Facebook family or St. James Pentecostal family viewing through Facebook, I should say, because you're part of our St. James Pentecostal family and it's certainly a joy for you to take the time to be with us um, as we worship the Lord on this Sunday morning, the Lord's Day. I want to bless you today in the name of the Lord. We are in difficult times, yes, but our God remains faithful. Amen. And we thank God for the testimony of his goodness through our lives. That in the midst of all, we can still praise him and worship him because he remains a faithful God. I do want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us for the first time. Amen. Welcome. And those of you who are viewing online for the first time, God bless you richly. Amen. I want to encourage those who are online. Uh, to share with your family members, your friends as you are viewing so that they can be a part, start a watch party so your friends could uh, be a part of our worship or service rather, even at this time as we go into the word of the Lord. I, um, as before we do, let me just quickly say that we have prayer on Monday and Friday on the Zoom platform from 6 and Bible study on Tuesday also from 6 to 7.30. Amen. This morning we go straight into the Word and the text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 7 reading verses 24 to 29. Matthew's Gospel chapter 7 reading verses 24 to 29. And when you find it, if you're in church, you can stand. I encourage those who are viewing uh, online to uh, get your Bibles. Don't just look at your phone or your computer or what have you, but set yourself to be in church because it could be amazing that you could miss it, miss the point. And I recognize how if you don't do something intently, we miss the blessing that was available. Like one time I remember listening to uh, the Bible on my phone and I was there doing some chores and I recognized that the Bible was just plain and I was minding my own business not realizing it was like a song in the background so some things if you don't do it intently you miss what is being said or done Amen. That's a simple encouragement. So let's go straight into the word. Matthew chapter 7, reading verses 24 to 29. Therefore, Jesus is speaking, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I would liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. 
for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. I want to sh share with you on the two builders or two builders this morning. Two builders and the importance of building on the right foundation. Importance of building on the right foundation. Bow your heads with me as we go before God. Oh, gracious and merciful Father, once again, we bow in your presence. We thank you for being our God, our source, our strength. Thank you for being in control. Thank you, dear God, for blessing this witness, charging it with your power. Let the anointing of your spirit destroy every yoke. God, meet each person at the point of their need as you would lift every burden that you will cause this word to come alive, be potent, oh God, be so relevant that transformation will occur within our lives. We will move from where we are to where we need to be in you. And we thank you for this mighty blessing, Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. The two builders. The Bible reveals to us that there are two primary paths in life. And these two paths are distinguished by the path of light or the way of light and the way of darkness. The path of light or righteousness which leads to God's blessings and the path of darkness, the path of the world, which leads to destruction. We understand that there is a choice to be made, so we have to choose. And whether consciously or unconsciously, intently or passively, Every individual has chosen a path and is drawing close to an end. And sooner or later, life discloses the prudence or the folly of our choice. Jesus illustrates this truth as he addresses two groups of people in the Sermon on the Mount. Throughout the sermon, he shows the differences between those who are his disciples and those who operate according to the principles of the world. In his sermon, he addresses Christian's Christian character, influence, righteousness, motivation, relationship, and Christian destiny, which is eternal. In the preceding verses from the text for which we have read, he speaks about two gates that leads to two different roads. Verse 13 and 14, he talks about those gates, a gate or a path that is straight and narrow and a path that is broad. And he advises to choose the narrow path Many find a broad path, but that path leads to destruction. It's easier, yes, but it doesn't lead, lead to eternal life. He speaks also about two trees producing two different kinds of fruit from verse 17. Where he says, so every good tree brings forth good fruit, but the corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. He continues and he speaks about two professions. Two professions leading into two completely different destinies. In verse 21 he says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my father which is in heaven verse 22 says many will say on that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name 
and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then he will say then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me you that work iniquity two different professions so he talks about two gates that lead to two different roads two trees that bear two different fruits two professions that lead to two different destinies and now in this final section as Jesus closes his sermon he gives a powerful yet brief but compelling story about two builders and their houses two builders building two different kinds of houses one that lasts and one that falls and let me hasten to say that everyone here or those who are viewing is a builder and everyone who is also here and viewing is represented by the wise man or the foolish man. So it's important today that we listen attentively because we are one of two groups of people. So I hasten also to ask the question, what are you building in your life? When you look back at your life thus far, are you building something beautiful, meaningful, spiritual, productive, lasting? Jesus' point in this parable is that we would build something that would last, that we would leave a legacy, that we would build something that will step out of time and way into eternity be a testimony of our faith while we lived upon the earth. It was Benjamin Franklin who said, work as if you were to live 100 years, but pray as if you were to die tomorrow. It is important that when we are building, we should build something that should last at least 100 years, but we should live as if, we were to, as if we were to die tomorrow. Jesus encourages us to build. He presents two builders and their houses as if next to each other to compare what is similar and what is different. Because in each of the houses, there are similarities and there are differences. First of all, we want to look at the similarities. The Bible says, as we look at the two builders, they both heard the words of Jesus Christ. They heard the word. Verse 24 and 26 says to us, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, everyone that hear these sayings of mine, they both heard the word and you who are here in church and viewing online you are hearing the word what is integral is Jesus's admonition to us as he says to us in Mark chapter 4 and verse 24, he says to us, pay attention to what you hear. So that in terms of our hearing, we have to put ourselves in the right environment and, and be listening to the right people. Because we could be in the audience of one who speaks folly. I am not necessarily against persons listening to secular music. But I say to persons, if all you listen to is secular music, you're not feeding your spirit. 
what you should. And if all you could do is listen to the news and feed your spirit with politics, you put yourself to bat in a sticky wicket. Because you listen and you feed yourself words of men and women who create animosity and hate within your heart and who may just lead you into a path of unrighteousness. Be careful what you hear. Luke 8, 18 says to us, pay attention how you hear. Because it's not just what we hear, but how we hear. We have to pay attention how we are listening. And there are, there are laws and rules for listening. Because everyone who is in the audience is not listening the right way. So you have to learn how to listen. They say you're hearing, but you're not listening. And, 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 the, and Ro Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says, So faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of the Lord. So that based upon what we hear, what we listen to, it will enter into our hearts and it will begin to govern our lives. It is necessary to pay attention to what you're hearing. Because what you're hearing will either increase your faith or lessen your faith. They both heard the words of Jesus Christ. Secondly, they both built houses. They both built houses. They were both building a life each day, each year, step by step, stone by stone, decision by decision, building. And what we have come to understand in terms of the building here, it has to do with our spiritual lives. So that when we come to the end of our life and we stand before God, we either hear one of two things. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Or, depart from me, I know you not. For when we stand before God, we don't get to go back to build again. You either build right now because when you stand before God there is no reincarnation so that you could come back as a horse to be a good righteous horse or a good righteous or a righteous tree or dog or something of, of the sort. Build, build. You have to build right in this life. Thirdly, both houses were tested. The rain came, the streams arose, the wind, the wind blew and beat against the houses. Both houses were tested by the storm. The storms of life test all of us. Whether you are in God, out of God, in church, out of church, a Christian or a non-Christian, it doesn't matter who you are, the storms of life face all of us. And I know some of us will have extended periods of sunshine. Sometimes there are persons who 
they are just going through years upon years of sunshine. Just sailing on calm waters through the ocean of life, basking in the glory and the blessing of the Almighty God. God bless your fuzzy heart. But if you have been in that period for a very long time, could I just give you a, a gentle warning that sooner than later, a storm will come. Storms come to all of us. Real storms. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me leave it right there. There are social storms, financial storms, health storms, 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 real storms. Come to us. There's a, there, there's a reason why, why the alcohol business and the tobacco business is so lucrative. Because if you're not serving the Lord... You need a drink. Or you need a smoke. Just to live, just to, just to get by. So some people don't pray every day, but they smoke every day. And they drink every day. Both houses were tested. And if you have lived long enough, I am certain... You have been through some storms. The Bible also speaks about differences. And the Bible says that one man was wise and the other was foolish. One man was wise and the other man, he was foolish. So, so that the wise man, He built his house upon a rock and the foolish man built his house upon sand. Proverbs 14, 16 says, A wise man feareth and departed from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. There is an interesting story in Matthew parable, in, let me say parable, in Matthew 25. Most of us know Matthew 25. And if you don't know it, I would want to encourage you uh, to read it. Matthew, Matthew 25 talks about the parable of ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. And all through the story, we see that uh, these virgins maintain their morality in terms of their virginity to be qualified to meet the bridegroom. But the scripture declares that five, the five wise virgins, they took extra oil in their lamps and the five foolish did not. So while the bridegroom tarried, the foolish virgins were running out of oil and when the call came, they asked the wise for some of their oil. The Bible says they, say no, they said to them, no, go and buy your own oil. When they were doing so, the call of the bridegroom came. The, the, the wise entered with the bridegroom. The door was shut. Thereafter, the foolish came and they didn't make it. They were still virgins. They still had morality. You know what that says to me? That sometimes it's not a question of if you sin or you didn't sin. But that the decisions that you make to get some extra oil, some extra prayer for your own personal sustenance or life as a Christian is very important because no man knows the day 
nor the hour when Jesus is coming. And wisdom here, I would want to liken it onto spirituality. Because sometimes we need some spirituality. So that we can hear from God, that our spiritual eyes be open, our spiritual ears be open. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Some things you have to understand spiritually. And if you don't understand it spiritually, you're batting in a sticky wicket. One was wise, one was foolish. The Bible says the second uh, difference is one was a doer of the word and one was not a doer of the word. So that James chapter 1 and verse 22 says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. So that one man didn't only hear the word, but he did what he heard. And the next one heard the word and did nothing. One was a doer and one was just a hearer. After you leave church and you hear a word, you have to do the word. After you read your Bible and you get a word, you have to do the word. Because if you don't do the word, then you would not be building upon Jesus' scenes. Thirdly, one built his house upon the rock and the other built his house upon the sand the difference here was the foundation and we understand that the foundation may just be one of the most important parts of a house foundation 1 Corinthians 3.11 says no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12 says, not on gold or silver or, or some precious stone or wood here or stubble, but that you you would, but we have to build on the foundation which is Jesus Christ. Because no other foundation would last. No other foundation would stand. Religion wouldn't stand, money would not stand, the love of your life wouldn't stay. You have to build on Jesus. The fourth difference. One house stood and the other house fell. When the storms of life hit the house that was built upon Jesus, that was built upon the rock, that house stood. The Apostle Paul, taking up the argument of the Christian life, he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8 and verse 9, he says, We are troubled on every side. And when I read that, that scripture just came alive and it, 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 it was solidified within my own spirit. We are troubled on every side. Sometimes everywhere you look is trouble. Yet we are not distressed. Hallelujah. Our God has the ability, the power to give us a peace that passes all understanding. He said, we are perplexed. Sometimes you're confused. You don't know what to do. But we are not in despair. Persecuted. Sometimes the devil possesses people to come against you. 
but we are not forsaken. Cast down, but we are not destroyed. As believers, trouble come to us on every side. Proverbs 10.25 declares, As the world wind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. When the world wind comes, the wicked is no more. But because of the foundation of the righteous, the righteous stands. One house stood and the other house fell. Some translation talks about a crash. And you ever hear somebody say, I crashed the car? And there's some, and, and when you hear, you know, of a crash, it, it's serious. You didn't just bounce the car, you crashed the car. You know, so you have a, a plane crash. You have Sometimes your computer crash. Your stock crash. The Bible didn't just say it crashed. The Bible said there was a great crash. There was a, a great fall. It gives the extent of the fall of the man or of the woman who doesn't build, build rather his life on Jesus Christ. So the Bible says their response to the word by the crowd was one of amazement. They were dumbfounded. They were struck to the core as they has never heard anyone teach like Jesus. The, the Bible says that they were amazed. And I think they were amazed of the content of his teaching because he was speaking truth he was speaking life and he was speaking love. It was not about a day that you should worship. And some people don't hear themselves because they talk more about the day that they have to worship more than they talk about Jesus. Some people talk about their prophet or their saint and they pray to them more than they pray to Jesus. The conversation is more about the religion that they are in than it is about Jesus. When Jesus spoke in the Sermon on the Mount, he spoke about the good news of the kingdom. He said to them that true righteousness is really a matter of the heart. Rather than laws that you keep, it's not just about laws, but it's a matter of the heart. Because if your heart is not right, even if you do all the law, you still will make it to heaven. He spoke about true discipleship and how we should live. Because there is a way to live as a true disciple. So that even when your enemy hungry, you have to feed him. And pray for him. The Bible says they were amazed not just by the content of his teaching, but they were amazed by the manner of his teaching. He taught as one having authority. Like the disciples who were amazed when he spoke to the wind and he spoke to the sea. And he said, peace be still. And they said, what man of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? He didn't teach like the scribes or the Pharisees. And I tell you this, brethren. There is a response when you come in contact with Jesus. There is a response. So my mind went first of all to the apostles when Jesus called the apostles from Matthew chapter 4 where he called, where the Bible says in, in verse 18 he met Peter and Andrew, his, bro his brother. And, and he said to them, follow me. 
And the story in the verse seems to be so casual as if Jesus was just walking by the seaside, saw, saw Peter and Andrew and said to, to them who were fishermen, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the Bible said straight away they followed him. Later on, the scripture declares that he saw James and John in a ship with their father. And he also said to them, follow him. And they immediately left the ship, left their father and followed Jesus Christ. There is something about coming in contact with Jesus. The woman at the well in John chapter 4 and verse 9 who we would say would have known about men and would have had experiences with them met a man in the person of Jesus Christ and after she met him as if what she was looking for in a man she found in the man Christ Jesus as she ran into the city Verse 29 says, and she said, come see a man that told me all I ever did. When you come in contact with Jesus. The Bible talks about the keeper of the prison who awoke from his sleep after Paul and Silas was praying and there was a move of God in the prison. And as he came to Paul and Silas, recognizing that God had just moved in the prison, no prisoner left, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There has to be a response when you come in contact with Jesus. There's nothing like coming in contact with him. And in my estimation, we need to arrive at that place where he, we make him Lord of our lives. Because the truth is, all of us are builders. And we are all building something. As I seek to close... Let me, let me say, the point of the teaching is that we understand that we need to build on Jesus. That's the point of the teaching, basically. Not on religion, where there is Pentecostalism or Catholicism or Hinduism or Islam or whatever. We need to build on Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So if we are to build on anybody, we need to build on Jesus Christ. Some of us probably need to dig up our foundation because we have been building wrong. Some of us need to change our ways, change our perspective. Some of us have not been listening And I'm certain some of us have come in contact with somebody who, when you try to explain to them what to do, they say to you, I know. And some of them have three I knows. Try to explain to them what they should do, and they say, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves. Take a hard look at ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, what have we been building? Jesus is that sure and steadfast anchor that holds. He, he is our stable and secure foundation. He is a rock of our salvation. I assure you, whatever storm may come your way, Jesus 
that foundation will stand. And we are here today, some of us, not just because we are learning in a new truth, but we have experienced this truth. And we could think of the goodness of the Lord. Because some of us have faced some storms. And the storms were devastating. It devastated our lives. It tested our faith. Storms that sought to unearth the foundation that we have laid. But we are still here today because Jesus is our sure and steadfast foundation. The anchor holds. Jesus, my anchor holds. I could have lost my mind. Stress that came upon me in different seasons of my life could have caused me to make a decision not to be a pastor. But I thank God for his peace. I thank God for his strength. I thank God for his faithfulness. And I know many of us could say like me, thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your faithfulness. If God has been good and faithful to you, come on, put your hands together. I'd give him a praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. What are you building? What are you building? Let's build on Jesus Christ. I want to pray a prayer of repentance. Because I think some of us may just need to build differently. Some of us need to dig up our foundation. Some of us have a good foundation, yes. But we start, you know, we get lazy. We get tired. We stop doing what God says to us to do. And, and we understand that delayed obedience is disobedience. So some things that God said to us to do 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 3 years ago, 2 years ago, last year, and we are not doing, it means that we are in disobedience. I want to encourage us today. Let's stand and pray. Those of you who are viewing live, I want you to pray with me. Because we both fall in one of those, we all fall in one of the two categories of either a wise builder or a foolish builder. Father, we come to you this morning. We come to you today in the name of your dear son, Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you will minister unto us by your Holy Spirit. That God, your hand will be upon us and that the power of your Spirit will so destroy every yoke. God, that you will sanctify us Forgive us, O oh God, for we have been building wrong. We have not been building on your sins. God, some of your teachings have been difficult. Some of the things that you have said to us to do, O oh God, we want to do them. Like the Apostle Paul declares, but God, it has been difficult. But we come today in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, we repent of our sin. We ask that you will forgive us, sanctify us. And God, fuel our lives so that we could build upon that foundation that we need to build upon. Oh God, some of us are in the midst of storms. God, difficult storms, financial storms, health storms, God, social storms, mental storms, God, storms, relationship storms, God, storms of life that God is facing us. And God, we come to you today. We ask first of all for your peace that passes all understanding. And God, we 
thank you for you being our anchor. God, like Peter, some of us have taken our eyes off of you and we are sinking. Oh God, we are sinking, we are sinking. God, is storm is treacherous. God, it's a lot for us to deal with in this pandemic season. So God, we seem to be sinking, we seem to be fading away spiritually. Oh, so God, this morning, we take our eyes from the storm and God, we focus on Jesus, who will be our anchor, who will speak to the storms in our lives. Oh God, minister to us by your spirit. Lay your hand upon us and do a mighty work in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I am praying also for those who have not been building at all. They are not saved. They are not born again of the spirit of God. There is no foundation within their life or the foundation is sand. That's what they are building on. So God, I pray today that each person who is viewing and they are not saved, they are not born again, that it is decision will be made to serve Jesus. A decision will be made to live for the Lord. That God, that person, that man, that woman who is viewing today will repent of their sins and God, they will say, God, I want to serve you in spirit and in truth and i thank you god for saving i thank you god for sanctifying i thank you oh god for doing a complete work within their life in jesus mighty name and god i give you praise for the victory and i thank you today in jesus name amen could we put our hands together and give the lord a praise offering <laughs> hallelujah god we thank you we thank you. We thank you. Come on, lift your hands and just give God a praise this morning. Come on, open your mouth and just bless him. Those of you who are viewing, come on, lift your hands and your voice and give God a note of praise. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify your name. We give you all the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, oh God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. Oh God, we thank you. We bless your name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to lift the tithes and the offering. And I recognize sometimes I may casually lift the offering. But tithes and offering is no casual, passive exercise. We worship God with our tithes and our offering. And no one wants to hear that you have robbed me with tithes or with offering. But you want to be faithful to God. And I know that there are situations and circumstances that will arise that at times affect us and affect our giving. And we thank God for his mercy. But we thank God for faith also. Because whenever we give, whether we're in a time of abundance or we're in a time of little, we thank God for the opportunity of giving and be given faith. Given faith, whether it's a time of little or abundance. And this morning as we give, we want to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering. I want to encourage those of you who are online. Because many times you have persons who are online and they may not be giving of their tithes or giving of their offering. Um, because you're not in church so there is no basket that is probably passed in front of you where you feel embarrassed because everybody's seeing you or and you don't you don't have anything or you're not giving in some cases i want to encourage you to give to give to give an offering you know sometimes it's not just giving your tithes and some people may do just their tithes at the end of the month but if you're not in church at this time you need to give your offering also because it's not just tithes, but it's also offering. And I want to also remind the membership of our property pledge. Amen. That we still have a property that we are paying off for. And we want you who have pledged to be committed to what you pledge to do. Let's go before God. Father, we worship you with our tithes and with our offering. We thank you for the opportunity of giving. And God, we could give and make investment in the business of the kingdom. God, with assurance within our hearts, 
we know that what we do will step out of time and go way into eternity. So we say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for blessing us. God will make us worse for giving. We hear Moses praying and he said, God, this is your people that you have brought out of the land of Egypt. And God, I bring your people, all of us who you have brought out of the land of Egypt, and we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for your hand being upon our lives. For a testimony of your goodness and of your faithfulness. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 The worship ministers are coming. And they will lead us in worship. As the ushers will wait upon us. Those of you who are online. There is that account number. That is on the screen. I want you to get pen and paper. Write down the number. Um, screenshot the number so that you can have it so that you are able to give God bless you richly Hallelujah Every praise is to our God Every word of worship with one accord Every praise Every praise is to our God Say Hallelujah to our God, glory, hallelujah, is to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God. this morning. Amen. Let me encourage you to have a great week and don't let the week have you, but do have a great week. Remember, God loves you. We love you. I love you. We are praying for you. If you want to sing the doxology, amen at this time as we close the service. <laughs>